Alzheimer's attributes to over 100,000 deaths per year in the U.S. In 2013, 5 million Americans were living with Alzheimer's disease. It is projected by year 2050 that that number will rise to 14 million people. The number of people living with Alzheimer's doubles every five years after the age 65. No, it's not called Alzheimer's disease. The disease was named after the psychiatrist Alois Alzheimer, who was the first person to describe the disease. Alzheimer's is a progressive neurodegenerative disorder. It is the most common disease of aging. Alzheimer's is characterized by severe behavioral, motor, and cognitive impairments. It involves parts of the brain that control thought, memory, and language. It is the most common cause of dementia, accounting for 75% of all cases. Alzheimer's significantly shortens life expectancy and is one of the principal causes of physical disability, institutionalization, decreased quality of life among the elderly. Mortality is increased by 40% with Alzheimer's. The median survival following diagnosis is three to six years. Frequently, the cause of death of Alzheimer's sufferers is secondary conditions such as pneumonia, or heart disease, which can be made worse by many of the symptoms of Alzheimer's. It's a pressing public health problem with no effective treatment. Alzheimer's is a leading cause of nursing home placement and is a major economical health burden. Its costs are estimated at $140 billion in healthcare, nursing home placement, and lost wages and productivity for family members and caregivers. Worldwide, the cost of medical care for dementia sufferers is approximately $605 billion. Age-related biological processes may be implicated in the cause of the disease. Furthermore, the strong association of Alzheimer's with increasing age may partially reflect the cumulative effect of complex interactions of genetic susceptibility, psychosocial factors, biological factors, and environmental exposure experience over the lifespan. So, old age is the strongest risk factor for Alzheimer's. There is increasing evidence that points to the potential roles of additional risk factors for the disease, like midlife blood pressure, obesity, smoking, and diabetes. There are also possible beneficial roles of psychosocial factors, like higher education, active social engagement, physical exercise, and mental stimulating activities. Alzheimer's is a progressive disease beginning with mild memory loss, then possibly leading to the loss of the ability to carry on a conversation and respond to environment. Many studies support that there is a long preclinical phase of the disease. It is suggested that the disease begins 10 to 15 years before onset of clinical symptoms. Early symptoms may be first mistaken as early signs of aging. Later stages result in the sufferer being unable to perform everyday tasks, such as carrying out basic hygiene routines or being able to bathe or eat independently. The disease often goes undiagnosed until it reaches these more debilitating stages. Individuals with early stages of Alzheimer's are most likely to benefit from disease-modifying therapies. There is no cure for Alzheimer's disease as of right now. Existing treatments only provide symptomatic relief without being able to prevent, stop, or reverse the process. However, it was anticipated that therapeutic and preventative strategies that lead to even a one-year delay and the onset and progression of Alzheimer's disease would significantly reduce the burden of this disease. It is suggested that hydrogen water could be used for the development of therapeutic interventions for Alzheimer's disease. Okay, so after evaluating the research, we have broken up the data into five key topics. Alzheimer's is actually a very complicated disease, so I will try to make this as simple as possible. Here we go with the first topic. We start with the topic we've seen so many times in this series, oxidative stress. It is suggested that oxidative stress plays a pivotal role in the development of Alzheimer's. It occurs when antioxidant defenses against free radicals can no longer maintain homeostasis in the brain. This process is increased in the brain with aging. The brain is considered to be the most vulnerable part of the human body against ROS. The brains of Alzheimer's patients appear to have significant oxidative damage. The control of oxidative stress is considered to be a major therapeutic strategy for various neuronal conditions. This study suggests that antioxidant therapies may be beneficial for preventing ROS-related diseases such as Alzheimer's. It was reported here that the administration of H2 inhibited oxidative stress and improved impaired memory. The results here suggest that hydrogen water is beneficial for the prevention and alleviation of oxidative stress-induced human neurodegenerative diseases. 
According to research, hydrogen can potentially exhibit neuroprotection, anti-neuroinflammation, and anti-neurodegeneration effects. In recent years, oxidative stress and neuroinflammation have been reported to be involved in Alzheimer's. The neuroprotective effects of treatments with molecular hydrogen have been reported in both basic and clinical settings. Here it says hydrogen prevented beta amyloid induced neuroinflammation and oxidative stress. Increasing evidence from animals and human studies indicate that molecular hydrogen offers significant neuroprotective effects in Alzheimer's disease via alleviating the inflammatory response and oxidative stress. Here we see drinking hydrogen water for 18 weeks inhibited neurodegeneration. And finally, here we see that the prevention of neuroinflammation and oxidative stress by hydrogen may contribute to the improvement of memory dysfunction. Mitochondrial dysfunction has an early and dominant role in Alzheimer's disease. Okay, so extensive literature exists to support that mitochondrial dysfunction plays a critical role in the development of Alzheimer's disease. Here we see that hydrogen increases the antioxidant potential of the mitochondria. It concludes saying hydrogen attenuates mitochondrial oxidative stress and dysfunction and inhibits mitochondrial mediated cell death. And here it says hydrogen water improves mitochondrial dysfunction. The mitochondria in an Alzheimer's brain have reduced membrane potential, increased permeability, and produces excess ROS. Well, in this study, it says that hydrogen water also scavenges the intracellular ROS and prevents the decrease of mitochondrial membrane potential. Mitochondrial biogenesis is also of importance. It plays an essential role in maintaining adequate amount of functional mitochondria by compensating for damaged mitochondria that have been eliminated. Mitochondrial biogenesis is thought to be impaired in Alzheimer's, where well, the quantity of mitochondria are noticed to be reduced in the Alzheimer's brain. In this study, it states hydrogen actually promoted mitochondrial biogenesis. Beta amyloid peptides are identified in the cause of neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's. These peptides can induce ROS, which can accumulate and lead to mitochondrial dysfunction, which then triggers cell death. Our results indicate that hydrogen-rich water directly counteracts oxidative damage by neutralizing excessive ROS, which then leads to the alleviation of beta amyloid-induced cell death. The findings suggest that hydrogen may have potential therapeutic value to inhibit beta amyloid-induced neurotoxicity. It is therefore important to target mitochondrial dysfunction in Alzheimer's to slow or prevent the neurodegenerative process and restore neuronal function. Preliminary preclinical trials show that drinking hydrogen water seem to improve pathologies of mitochondrial disorders. Now let's talk about ghrelin. Ghrelin is a hunger hormone that has a role in the onset and progression of neurodegenerative disorders. It has recently been associated to Alzheimer's for its neuroprotective and anti-cell death activities. Ghrelin has been known to improve memory and learning. It is tightly linked to energy regulation and cognitive processes. This study provides evidence that ghrelin is altered in the brain of Alzheimer patients, which suggests that it can contribute to the severe cognitive deficit observed in the disease. And here it says that the disruption of normal ghrelin secretion might contribute to the metabolic changes in Alzheimer patients. These results suggest that ghrelin might improve cognitive function in Alzheimer's disease. So in this study, we see that H2 actually increases gastric expression of ghrelin secretion. And here it says that oral H2 water exerts a neuroprotective effect by activating the gastric ghrelin system. And finally, we see here that H2 induced ghrelin secretion provided neurological benefits. Alzheimer's disease accounts for 75% of dementia patients. Dementia can be defined as a clinical syndrome characterized by a cluster of symptoms and signs manifested by difficulties in memory, disturbances in language and other cognitive functions, changes in behavior, and impairments in activities of daily living. In 2009, there were more than 25 million people in the world affected by dementia and around 5 million new cases each year. The number of people with dementia is anticipated to double every 20 years. This study concluded that H2 water may have the potential for suppressing dementia. The lifespan in the H2 group was also longer than the control group. It has been reported that consuming H2 water inhibits age-related brain alterations and memory decline. The data in this study demonstrated that drinking hydrogen water daily was effective in preventing age-related learning and memory impairment. 
Oral intake of drinking water containing a high concentration of hydrogen is a novel, safe, and potent approach for preventing age-related cognitive disorders. Unlike more conventional drugs, H2 has no known serious side effects and is effective for preventing the onset of neurodegenerative diseases and aggravations of acute neuronal conditions. Let's sum it all up with this quote. Dietary interventions with food or drinking water may be ideal for elderly people because of its feasibility. The administration of hydrogen water could easily be incorporated into routine life without complicating or changing lifestyle. On the basis of our results, we believe that hydrogen water merits further investigation for possible therapeutic and preventative use for age-related cognitive disorders. So who do you know that would benefit from the potential effects of hydrogen for Alzheimer's disease. I'm sure we all could use the extra preventive measures. Stay tuned for our next episode in the series, All About Diabetes. Don't forget to share this video and to check us out on Patreon. And that's your dose of H2 for your brain in a few minutes. <laughs>